Hey, I'm Steve Miller and welcome to this latest video of how I use the XO Photo Lab to edit my photos. Um, thought I'd go back to a landscape um, this time. I'm using uh, Photo Lab 9, but th this could be uh, quite easily done with Photo Lab 8. You just wonder how to use the AI mask. Um, I have had looked at actually edited this photo before, but I thought I'd just go back and do it again um, and just show you sort of how I go about editing this landscape image. Um, this is how it came in. Um, there's a couple of slight, slight tweaks that coming when I uh, first open the image in Photo Lab that I have set. That is straight from out of camera, so you can see it is quite flat. Um, but there is a few adjustments that are automatically done. Uh, one of them, one of the main ones, is the the rendering. So I have it set to generic rem rendering for the camera that I used at the time. If I turn that off, you'll see that's sort of how it's flat. How it flattens. Um, smart my lighting. I uh, quite often I always have the smart lighting turned on, but um, you can just see what the smart lighting is doing, but on this image I didn't really like what he was doing the smart lighting so I'd turn that off for this. As you can see this is quite a dramatic light for this day. Uh, if anything I'd say it just looks a little bit overexposed this image. I haven't burnt any highlights but I think with a dramatic look I think it'd just be better with the exposure turned down slightly. So I'll go something like that. Straight away for this, I think I'll look at the sky. It is a quite a dramatic sky, but I'll try and bring a bit more out in the sky. So I'd go to the um, local adjustments, and for this, I'd use a sky AI mask. I mean, I could use, um, if you haven't got Photo Lab 9, if you're still using Photo Lab 8, you can use the linear mask. It, it just do the same job. But I'm on 9, so I might as well use the sky mask. So if you go into AI masking, and select the sky. As you can see, it's done quite a good job there selecting the sky for me. It doesn't need a lot doing to it, it's quite dramatic as it is, but I think skies can all this, the clear view plus can all this add a little bit of drama and maybe even just slightly just knock the uh, exposure down on that sky. That's a uh, yeah, I'll leave that for now. Now, the other thing I'm looking at is, could do with a little bit of contrast adding to this image, but um, there is different ways. You can use the contrast sliders, um, which would work. I can just add a bit of contrast using the contrast slider. But quite often I'll, um, I'll use the um, tone curve and use a, a Luma tone curve. So I'd just pull the um, white points in. So if you just you can pull the white points in from there and the black point, and it just adds that contrast for us. There's quite a few different ways of you know of getting the look that you want using Photo Lab. Same as any software really. There's there's more than one uh, way to skin a cat, as we say. Right, for this now I'm looking and thinking maybe this, this is a little bit too bright, this area in the middle. Um, dramatic light, but I think it just needs toning down a bit. So it'd be another local mask, and this time um, I'm going to go off the old fashioned control point. I think you'd do this quite well. So I just do quite a large control point over the bright areas. Just drag that out a bit more. What you have to realise is with the control points, it's it's sort of aimed at where the centre of the control point is. So if I put that over the dark tree there, you see it's picking out the trees more than the uh, the surrounding area, the grasses and things. So because I want to tone the light, bit the light part of this image down, I'll try and pick a, a light area for the control point to go over somewhere, something like that. And same again as I go along and add some more control points in this area and I can resize them. Uh, just drag that one there. 
I'll resize that one. I'll resize that one. Might just add another one there. Now if it bleeds into the sky on the other areas, you can actually use negative control points. So if I could just go and put negative control points, it'll just show you, it'll just take it where it has affected the sky a little bit. So now, like I say, in this, um, it's just a little bit bright. So for this, I could try knocking the exposure down. Actually, while I'm here, you can tweak uh, the control point mask as well by using these chroma and luma sliders. Um, obviously, the chroma is for the um, colour, which I'm not too bothered about the colour. It's the light that I'm trying to change here. So I could really, I could probably knock the... Uh, if you see, if, if I knock that chroma slider right up, it's just trying to pick the areas that the center of the control point is uh, that color. But I'm not really bothered about that, so I just I'd knock the I could knock the chroma down on that, and I could maybe up the the luma uh, just to pick them brighter areas. Now. For this, I will just drop the highlights down for that area, and maybe exposure a little bit, and then bring a little bit of clear view plus because that's just like a D hair slider, so it'll sort of darken that area and put a bit of contrast in there. So, so that is that's looking quite nice now. I'll just close off them. The local, that's, I think that's about it for the uh, local adjustments. The the colour is fine. I don't think I need to do anything on the colour with this. There's a couple of things I've just noticed here. There's a sheep here right on the very edge of the frame, which I don't like. So I'll just get rid of that. Um, quite easy to do just using the, the heel brush. And I think there was a couple of areas... Just over here, the, the lighter areas there that I didn't really like. Uh, there's a bit there. Just to get rid of them light areas that are on the very edge of the frame. And that is looking quite good. Um, again, maybe I could look into the, the colours. I mean, a lot of the time it is just having a having to play really just see what things do I mean there's quite a lot of orange in the this image so just globally I could try maybe uh, what would happen if I knocked the luma down on the orange and see that brings a bit of contrast into the image or I could up it but definitely if I just drop it and it's definitely a case of just very small tweaks you don't want to be doing too much on these let's back see the greens there's greens in there so let's see what happens with the greens if I do the There's colour contrast there, but if I wanted, I could even turn the greens a little bit yellower. So, you know, it, it's subduing the image a bit. Or I could make the greens a little bit bluer if I want to make, make them pop a bit more. But in this one, I think if I just leave it as it is, uh, they're not looking too bad, the colours. So I'd say we're looking quite good there. We're not a million miles away. I think I, this is where I'd walk away and I'd leave it for... Uh, Go and have a, a brew or something and come back and have a look and see what I think. But um, another thing I'll show is how, um, if you've got film pack, DxO film pack, it can help doing your landscape images. I did have a quick look at this and I did find that one of the uh, the presets, the film presets, did um, quite good at uh, speeding up my workflow for this image and give me good results. So I'll just create a virtual copy of that. And I'll reset it. So that's back to how we had it originally. Uh, and the preset that I found that looked good with this was the Kodak Elite Chrome Extra Color 100. I mean, there's all different ones you can try, but I quite liked this one. It's just a matter of your own taste. So you can add the preset. So I'll add that preset to the image. It's just going away and it'll put that preset on. And then 
what you, you have to realise is when you use the preset, because it's part of the XOR film pack, the preset actually puts grain on the image. So it will add grain because it's trying to make it look like the, the actual film stock. So you can knock the, the grain off um, if you don't like the grain. A lot of people don't like the grain. Um, I mean, you're doing denoising on images most of the time, so why add grain? But you can knock it off that way. Or another way, if I reset like that again, you um, you don't actually have to use the preset. You can just go in, and where I've got the generic rendering up here, I can say colour positive film, and then you could find that, which is there. So that's adding that, that colour rendering to that. And you'll see it hasn't added the uh, the grain. It's just done the colour rendering. So that's looking quite good straight away. I, I like the, like the colours on that. Uh, same again. I just add a bit of drama to the sky probably. So we'll go into local adjustments and we'll just say sky. Knock the exposure down slightly, a little bit of clear view plus. And then on this one, I think globally, I might just knock the highlights down. Yeah, and that's looking quite, that's looking nice. So as you can see, same again, I'd, I'd have to go in and uh, I might as well do it while I'm here. I'll get rid of the, the sheep and then the little bits of... Uh, bright grass just on the edge of the frame which I don't like to see uh, can be distracting so that is a quick edit using um, well not a preset it's just the colour um, the Kodak Elite Chroma extra colour um, film simulation so if I go in and I'll just show you the difference So that's my um, editing, how I do it myself. Um, that's the original, that's how it comes in from the camera and that is the edit. And then this is the one. So just a slight change, just, just difference in colour but uh, yeah, I mean it's, it's like say it's all how you, I'd just say that's slightly green and it's probably just a bit, I, I must admit I do like the, uh, with the film I did, I do like that better on, on this occasion. So I just thought I'd show you, you know, it's a film pack. Don't, don't use it on my wildlife very often, definitely not on my sport, but for doing landscapes it's, uh, it's very good. I mean you can set your own presets up if you like to do a, your um, autumn images a certain way you can you know you could set your own presets up but I just thought I'd show you there how that you know the uh, it can help you doing your, your landscape images um, I probably I might not be doing as many as of these I might just do one a, one a week now of these edits because I did a few more when uh, Photo Lab 9 came out just showing the AI masks and things work but uh, it's yeah I, I might not do as many I was just looking there at the histogram actually on this image and maybe I could even do a little bit of the luma curve on this on this image on this uh, rendering of it just up the highlights slightly we just had we did have a bit of scope there in the uh, on the histogram yeah so maybe like that So there we go, a quick edit using uh, Photo Lab 9. Um, so yeah, I hope it can help. You might pick up a few tips. And uh, I'm so, I'm sorry that I have to uh, have all my. Uh, it could be quite confusing for beginners because I've got all my tools over this side. It's just that I'm left-handed, and I use a Wacom tablet. But all the same tools are over here. Um, I've I have mentioned before. I've mentioned it to DxO that really we should be able to 
swap that to, to the left hand side but these icons here I can't swap them over I can I can copy all these over to this side all the um what do you call the palettes but for the, some reason I can't move these um these icons over here on the left hand side which is what I need really for uh, being a left hander it just makes it far easier so I'm sorry if it's a bit confusing because I'm I'm over this side doing me uh, sliders, but it's um, it's just just the way I have to work because I'm left-handed. Right. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.